Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer, the man to see for Admiral Dual Temp Refrigerators, Admiral Electric Ranges, Admiral Radios, Phonographs, and Magic Mirror Television. It's the Broadway Review, off the beam. Starring Sid Caesar, with Mary McCarty, Imogene Coca, Marge and Gower Champion, Roy Atwell, Sidney Smith, Florence Hinlow, James Starbuck, Tana Quill LaClerc, Tom Avera, Beatrice Seckler, Herbert Ross, Kenneth Ramo, Robert Len, Ronnie Cunningham. Produced and directed by Max Liebman. So, ring up the curtain! Top of the evening to you. It's time for your Admiral Review. To make each Friday sweeter than a honeycomb. We try to bring Broadway right into your home. Top entertainment for you. A top musical that's new. But just before we clear the floor and ring up the curtain, we'd like to be certain you know where to shop. And Admiral is wonderful, the cost is low, but the quality's always a top. A magic radio phonograph, the modern Admiral electric range. Go out and treat your sweet to a dual temp refrigerator. You'll get a kiss in exchange. The top of the evening to you. And now it's time to present the first scene. So keep your eye on your Admiral screen. Admiral Broadway Review, this week with a happy blend of song, dance, and comedy, invites you to get off the beam. Look around, look around, look around, look around, and you'll find that life can be somewhat of a grind. A million rules and regulations Obey the law, resist temptation Show the line, say in that rut Which may be proper and fine But if you have a street that we've all got in us And find the beaten path monotonous you better move out of the crew, brother, get off the beam. If you want to sidestep the conventional, looking for something for dimensional, better decide to bust the time. Brother, get off the beam. Take my advice, skate off the night and write something that has something to do with it. When all said and done, think of the fun you're gonna have. Doing it to get in the spirit of the century, living a little more adventure. Better get hip, get out of step, brother, stay off the beam.
All right now, Weasel. You gotta cut that stuff out about me having to go see a psychiatrist. Yeah, but gee. Now look, my mind is all right. You understand? Well, I only yesterday I give myself one of them tests in the Reader's Digest. You know, I come out. How? Subnormal. <laughs> yeah, but Strangler, you've been slipping, boss. I mean, it's okay to make such flighty and errors, duh, like like forgetting to load your gun. But when you buy tickets to a policeman's ball. That's serious. Look, I tell you, I ain't nuts. Who says you're nuts, Chief? You ain't nuts. You're neurotic. You got a slight case of hypertension, uh, an adipose complex, complex, and uh, a, a dash of schizophrenia. Yeah? Yeah. What's that? You're crazy. Uh, you don't know. Oh, I know all about it, Chief. <laughs> I was analyzed. <laughs> and it's helped me in my work. <laughs> See what I mean, Chief? Yeah. You're the best adjusted moron I ever seen. You think it'll help me? Sure. Now, I got a card here to the head psychiatrist, Doctor. Right around the corner. I made an appointment for you. You did? Yeah, sight me. Sight me. Sight me. Sight me. Sight me. I'm afraid that will have to be all for today, Mrs. Cartwright. But thank you very much. We're making great progress. Great progress indeed, considering the fact that we've only been working at it for six and a half years. Thank you, Doctor. I'll see you tomorrow, Doctor. Yes, Mrs. Cartwright. See you tomorrow. Good day. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Uh, Mr. Guinness? Yeah. You're the guy who's supposed to make me happy in me work? I'm a practicing psychiatrist. It's not practicing to stop playing. Well, I'm afraid it's not as simple as that, Mr. Guinness. You see, analysis is a very complicated procedure. It involves a good deal of work and a great deal of time. Time? Don't worry about time, Doc. We've got all afternoon. Let's get started. Very well, then. Please lie down. What's that? I said, please lie down. Now look, Doc. I didn't come here to get me tonsils taken out. I just want you to work on me complexes. This happens to be the proper procedure. Now please cooperate and lie down. All right. But don't try that. Please <laughs> lie down. Now, start talking. Suppose you tell me something about yourself, um, or what you like to do, who your friends are, or you know, what sort of job you pull lately. Oh, do you think I am, a stool pigeon? I assure you that everything you say in this office will be treated with absolute confidence. But you must cooperate now and lie down. I'll sit. Very well, then sit. Now, suppose you tell me something about your childhood. Yeah. All right, Doc, I'll tell you. When I was a kid, I was different. I wasn't like those other kids of nine. I was eight. Hmm, I see. <laughs> suppose you tell me something about your problems now. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Doc. I'm losing my grip. Getting soft, see? <laughs> I don't know, like just to pull a little job, like like knocking a couple of guys off or throwing a pineapple through the window or maybe going through a mob with a machine gun. Yes. A little thing like that. I'm starting to feel sorry for the people. Very serious. Go on. Even when I go to one of them gangster movies. Yes. I'm rooting for the cops to win. Uh, that's very unhealthy, Mr. Guinness. I'm afraid that you have an exaggerated sense of guilt complex. <laughs> However, that's very easy to remedy. Oh. Now, suppose you tell me something about your mother. I'll thank you to keep me mother out of this conversation. And besides, eh, I know all about you guys. I saw a snake pit. <laughs> besides, I love me mother. I go to visit her all the time when our paroles coincide. <laughs> well, now, if you want your mother to be proud of you, you must cooperate. Now, <coughs> please start talking. No. Talk. No. Talk. No. Oh, I see. Oh, that's better. I feel more at home. All right, killer. Start talking. Build the dope on your latest job. All right, all right, I'll talk. It was a bike job, see? Lefty was at the wheel, and Spud, Spud was a lookout. Yeah, who was watching on the other side of the street? It was a dead end. Yeah, we'll check that. Keep talking. <laughs> all right, see, I pulled the car up to the curb on the side of the bank. Yeah. <laughs> I walked into the bank, see? I pull a fast job. I walk in, I put all the dough in a sack. I run out of, the, out of the bank, I get in the car, just like that, I start the car. Here, let me help you. Thanks a lot, Doc. Listen, the alarm is probably out, there's not a second to lose. You better get in the car. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, Doc, you better hold the money. I gotta drive with two hands. Yeah, watch out, Chief, there's a cop on that corner. You better make a fast left turn here. Hey, look out, there's a truck! 
But I was close. I'll start the car again. Lousy gas. Hey, look out, there's a trolley. Hey, watch out, there's a push cart. Hey, look out for that old lady. Hey, watch out. Yeah, hey, you drive. What a drive. You all right? Come on, let's get out. Where's the money? Where's what? The money, the loot. Where is I it? haven't got it. What do you mean you haven't got the money? You must have fallen out when we made that fast left turn. Well, that's a Freudian error if I ever saw one. What's the matter? You're unhappy in your work? What's the matter? You're maladjusted? But I'm not a criminal, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. I don't fit into a job yeah, like nah, this. Nah. I'm neurotic, ass. Start talking. Watch your mouth. <laughs> From the cover of Life magazine, we bring you, as big as life itself, Marge and Gower Champion. You know, I'm quite sure that at some time or another, everybody here must have sung a roundelay. I mean, something like, um, oh, three blind mice, or maybe row, row, row your boats gently down the stream. So Marge and I thought it might be kind of fun to, um, well, do a roundelay, only not sing it. We're going to try it and do it and dance form it. Actually, it gets a little bit complicated because it's sort of like follow the leader. Uh, I take the first part, and Gower has to follow along and do what I've done. Uh -huh. And then a little later on, he takes the first part, and I have to follow along and do what he's done. Uh-huh. Three blind mice. <laughs>
Mary McCarthy. Folk songs, folk songs. Everybody's singing folk songs. If you don't pronounce the words right, and there's not a single joke, and there is no melody to sing, why then you're singing folk. You'll make millions of bucks if you'll say words like shucks. Sing of the earth so pretty. Sing of people you've seen. Keep your songs clean, but make the people nice and dirty. So you'll be a star if you get a guitar. Just make sure the strings are all broke. You'll make quite a sum if you dress like a bum. Go out and sing for. man he was a good man I know he was good cause he walked up to me and he said howdy <laughs> with a hey and a ho and a hey nonny no I met a man who said hello gosh that's America I love it. I'd like to sing another little song for you. Little ditty I had the pleasure of introducing. It's a wonderful song. I, my hair's a little disheveled tonight. I got it in my way. Cow eared Ralph, he murdered a fella and slugged 12 gals in an Idaho cellar. He was a simple man. And them gals was just plain folks. Do you remember Billy O? He was just one of the little folks. He was a little man. He was a midget. <laughs> now I'd like to sing another little ditty for you. It's a little song my pappy used to sing to me. It's a beautiful little ditty. I'll sing it. Oh, Woody McGravy, his beard dripped with gravy, he never worked at a job. But he sang songs all day, doodle doodle just Woody the way, fair and slob. <laughs> now, before I leave you, I'd like to sing another little song for you, a song I have a pleasure in doing. Neat Dave Smith was a man so merry He worked at his trade in a cemetery A wonderful digger was Neat Dave Smith Cause he loved everybody that he worked with And they was real earthy too, them folks Well, I like them a heck of a whole lot I just got time here to have a breather I'm gonna rest cause I like being with the family Being with all of you Let her rip. With a hay and a ho and a hay nonny no and a nipsel a doodle a diddle dee oh with a fiddle dee dee and a fiddle dee die and a fiddle dee diddle dee fiddle dee bye with a crawl on a low and a crawl on a lay and a crawl on a low 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 lay. Look, Ma, no words. <laughs> Art, take first place in our heart, and this is the museum where we all come to see him. Hail modern art! It's cubistic, surrealistic, non-objective and reflective. There are some who say it's cracked, but that's because it is abstract. Oh yes, it's colorful, it's sensitive, it's highly argumentative. It's great, it's exquisite, it's wonderful. What is it? Don't try to understand it or find out what it's about. It's something the artist had inside, and it just had to come out. It's 
not what you see, it's what you feel. It's not the banana, it's the peel. What an artist paints is nothing, but what does he conceal? It's not what you see, it's what you feel. It's not what is there, but what is not. An artist paints a woman on a cot. If half of her is missing, it's not that he forgot. It's not what is there, it's what is not. It's not the tree, it's the root. It's not the horn, it's the tooth. It's not the if, it's the but. It's not the squirrel, it's the nuts. It's not what you see, it's what you feel. An artist paints a foot that looks unreal. But the thing he tries to capture is the soul, not the heel. It's not what you see, it's what you feel. Hail modern art, hail modern art. Art has no popular appeal. The first time you look at it, you reel. There are times when what you're looking at can make your blood congeal. It's not what you see, it's what you feel. It's not what is there, but what it means. An artist doesn't care for pretty scenes. He can be much more significant by painting two sardines. It's not what is there, it's what it means. It's not the bell, it's the toe. It's not the button, it's the hole. It's not the dora, it's, it's the, the dunk. dunk. It's not the bedroom, it's, it's the, the bunk. It's not what he paints is in his age. Sometimes you'll find the meaning in the name. Then some people have a theory, and this is what they claim. It's, it's not in the picture. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you non-entities in the news. First, from Silvermine, Connecticut, we greet the financial wonder of the week, one who, 
through a strange set of circumstances, has amassed a huge fortune. Here she is, Miss Lotta Luker. <laughs> Miss Luker, would you tell us, please, how you managed to amass this huge fortune? Well, it's really very simple. You see, you call up two people, and then they each call up two people, and then another one calls up two people, and that makes eight people, you see. And then the eight people call up 16 people, then you go to a meeting at somebody's house, and you have a sort of map, you know, and your name gets on the top of the list eventually. And then when you're meeting, now today was my 12th day, you know, and this has been bothering me. We had our meeting on 42nd Street. Well... Miss Looker, thank you very much. What, uh, what am I supposed to do with this money? Oh, just put him in here, please. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Oh, there you are. Thanks. Thanks so much for your trouble. Well, not at all. <laughs> thank you, Imogene Coker. Nine entities in the news takes pleasure in presenting a lady who, by her occupation, is the very backbone of the wine industry in America. Her occupation is that of sampler. We bring you now Miss Gillespie from Dizzy Heights, Indiana. Miss Wine Cellar. Miss Wine Cellar, greetings, and would you tell us just exactly what it is that you do? Why, certainly, I sample wine. As you know, wine is the nectar of the gods, and tasting wine is really an art in itself. I've cultivated my taste so that I can tell you from an unlabeled bottle by just sipping a thimbleful of wine, the name of the wine, its year, and the part of the world that it comes from. That's very interesting, Miss Wine Cellar. It's really nothing at all. I'd be very glad to show you. Ah, rare old port, coming from the valley of Duero, Portugal, shipped from Or Porto, from which it derives its name. That's truly remarkable. Really nothing at all. I, I enjoy my work very much. <laughs> ah, and this is 20-year-old Sauterne, coming from the communes of Sauterne. Comprende? Ah, uh, oui. <laughs> ah. 30-year-old Rhine wine coming from the Valley of the Rhine. Fair Ah, uh, yeah! <laughs> For a minute, I thought it was breaking you, but of course, anybody can tell it. This is Chianti coming from Chianti, Italy. This is truly amazing. And this is the uh, Malaga. <laughs> now, this grape is grown in sunny Spain and also in California. And kiddo, don't let anybody kid you. That's the best little place in the whole cockeyed world. Yes, like thank it. you very much, Miss Wine Cellar. <laughs> don't you, you think... You know, that's a whole lot of baloney, that stuff about jumping on the grapes. That's how they make grapes. Wine is the next part of the garden. Huh? Yes, that's very interesting. Couldn't we make another appointment? <laughs> I want to tell you something, Bob. If ever you know you're alone at night and anything like that, and you're having a little nip of wine by yourself, there's nothing like a drop of gin to pick it up just a little bit. Uh, well, Miss Wine Cellar, perhaps we could make another appointment. You know what's the matter with this? Needs a little grapes in it. Just oh, yes. Me a oh, no, 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 no. No, Miss Wine Cellar. Well, then may I recommend putting in just a little bit of scotch. This is a nice light alcohol blend coming from Sam's Liquor Store on 34th Street. It's a little bit <laughs> Well, uh, there are other people waiting to be interviewed, Miss Wine Cellar. No, I like it, though. It's wonderful. It's so good. Uh, here, here, drink this. No, thanks. I'm driving. <laughs> Thank you, Mary McCarthy. Nine out of these human news this week brings you the winner of the International Olympic Spaghetti Eating Contest. From Spumoni, Italy, we bring you the worldwide champion spaghetti eater, Signor Ravioli. <laughs> Signor, you must be very proud of yourself. Yes, I'm very proud because I'm very happy to be champion. See, I get a, I get a lot of surprise. So I get a, a one year's supply meatball, and uh, I get uh, two tons of garlic. You must be very fond of spaghetti. Oh, spaghetti, she's my dish. Oh, look how nice it smells. Smell of spaghetti, it's nice. Eh? Oh, you know, it's not, it's not easy to eat spaghetti. You've got to be pretty clever. You know that, don't you? Do you have a special technique? Oh, there's lots of techniques, but I got it three ways. It's the best. First one is a single strand method. You just pick up one strand of spaghetti, see? And you take it like this here, thread it nicer like that. You understand? 
Of course, if you got a big bowl, it'll take you a couple of months to finish, you know. But you enjoy every mile. I like this way. Well, that's one way anyway. Next way is intelligence, you way. See, you do with a utensil. You pick them up a little bit, see, like this here, and you take it like that, and you wind it around, wind around, or only one way, see, because if you go the other way, you unscrew the whole spaghetti, you understand that? <laughs> that's the best way to do it. But of course, when you get them all wind, that's for amateurs, you know what I mean? My way is a brute force. That's the best way. You roll up your sleeve, see? You look around and nobody look on you. Then you attack the spaghetti like this here, see? You know, spaghetti's are very good. You want a big shoulders? Spaghetti give you big shoulders. Take a spaghetti, put them in like this. <laughs> You've got a big shoulder. Ah, smell of spaghetti. Ah, the nice. Ah, you sound bad. Look, I don't you know how to eat the chula very nice. Everybody eats Thank you, Sid Caesar. Tune in again next week for more non-entities in the news. Imogene Coca. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you've all seen and heard at some time or other what is known as the arrangement singer. Well, now, as you know, an arrangement singer would rather die than just sing the verse and the chorus of any song. She really has to last the number up. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to give you my idea, one of these very over-arranged characters, but she's managed to do to and with Cole Porter's Nights and Days. I've got you under my skin And a voice within me keeps repeating
about enough. Well, then get out. Get out and stay out. The singer, Robert Lenn. The dancer, Gower Champion. No, you just can't win once you've given in to the wiles and the smiles of a woman. She'll sing your song, then do you wrong. There's no worse witch than a woman, than a woman, than a woman. You may work and save, you'll end up a slave to the touch and the clutch of a woman. She'll spend your dough, then off she'll go. There's no worse witch than a woman, than a woman, than a woman. She'll haunt you and taunt you from morning till night. She'll get you, won't let you get far from her sight. She'll please you and tease you, but seldom appease you, woman. Are you listening? Lace is the face of a woman. She'll string along to you belong. She'll sing your song, then do you wrong. There's no word which Sid Caesar. You know, there's a certain type of picture that Hollywood makes, which is sure fire, cannot miss. This is the Technicolor Western. This picture is always about a state, Arizona, Nevada, Texas. But no matter what the state is, the story is always the same. To show you what I mean, let us take a look at one of these Technicolor sagas of the West. This one is called California or else. Bum, 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 bum. Stretching across the wide prairie, we see a long line of covered wagons pushing ever westward. You up there? You down there? Watch that horses? Get those horses in line there? Yeah, yeah. You up there now? Riding at the head, riding at the head of this rugged band of pioneers is our hero, the Texas Kid. Everyone on the wagon train is riding a black horse, but not the kid. His horse is white. As we look at him. We see the kid now talking to his Snow White stallion. Well, Brownie, <laughs> we're going to build a new clean life in a new clean country, eh, Brownie? <laughs> yeah, and you're going to be mighty happy in a new clean land, eh, Brownie? <laughs> and Nell back there in wagon number 14 going to make a mighty foul gal to settle down with, eh, Brownie? <laughs> 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 And now the wagon train settles down for the night. Well, I guess you get a little shut eye. Yeah, I guess it will too. Well, I did what? Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> Suddenly, from behind a water barrel, we see two feathers. <laughs> followed by a face. <laughs> the tribe has understood the message. <laughs> Next morning, from a nearby hill, we see an Indian smoke signal rising. <laughs> from a nearby hill, we see the answering smoke signal. <laughs> and 
And now we see the chief addressing his warriors. Are there any questions? <laughs> There's Indians! Indians coming over the hill! Well, there must be a hundred thousand! Well, get the get those wagons in a circle! Alright, get the ammunition! Alright, get the women and children down! There's more of them coming over! There must be a hundred thousand! Get the more ammunition! Alright, get the guns! Boom! Oh, look out for them barrels! Bang! Oh, look out the Boom! Well, we fought them off. <laughs> Boys! Boys, I want to tell you, you did a wonderful time. And I want to say it's real nice. Stop there, stingy. Where are you going? Pop, 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 pop. There's gold. Gold in California. Gold in California. There's gold in California. Gold in California. Gold in California. There's gold in California. Get up there. What? There's gold in California. Yeah. Boom, boom. Last chance saloon, California. I'll have a whiskey. I'll have a bourbon if you don't mind. Bang! I don't sleep with no man with whiskey. Give me that girl. I like you. I got no. I got four aces. So have I. Bang! Bang! What are you gonna bang? How's it outside tonight, Jack? Mighty quiet, boss. Well, boys, me, Black Mike. I own all the land around here. See, except that one piece, that cactus peach farm. But I'm gonna get that. See, it's kind of hard to get because that. Texas kid is always hanging around his daughter Nell, but I got a plan, see? Go right up to his place, blow up his house, burn down his barn, stampede his cattle, kill Cactus Pete, kill his daughter Nell, and murder the Texas kid. Have a drink, Sheriff. All right, <laughs> let's get going. <laughs> and now, the next scene takes place in the Hacienda. This scene has absolutely nothing to do with the picture, but in technical, it looks nice. Love you, love you, love you, see you, Mm. Stampede! There's Stampede in the valley! What? Nell's in there! Ha! Ah, brownie! Ah, all right, Brownie! Faster, faster, Brownie! Ah, faster, Brownie! Faster! Let's stretch those legs, Brownie! Faster! I'm trying, Tex. Now stop hollering. <laughs> all right, mm, mm. Here we are, the Stampede! All right, Brownie, go tell the soldiers! Ah, all right, mm, I'll break it up now! Mm, I got my gamma, I'll break it up! Tex, I'm coming, I'm coming, Nell! Well, Nell, it's your paw. How are you feeling, Cactus? I'm going. I'm going fast. So long, Nell. Goodbye, Tex. I'm going. I'm going. But before I go... Yes, Cactus. You know, I want you to promise me one thing. Yes, Cactus. You know the old barn? Yes, Cactus. Well, you know the, in the old barn there's the old covered wagon? Yes, Cactus. Covered? I'll show you, Cactus. <laughs> I'll get him for this, Nell. He won't get away with it. Ding, 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 All right, boys, the Texas kid got away, all right. But I know the Texas kid will be coming in town after me. So, Jack, you take 100 men with rifles, go up on the roofs. Jim, you take 50 men with pistols and go all around the town. Joe, you take 100 pounds of dynamite when you see him, kill him. Boom, boom. Have another drink, Sheriff. All right. Now, now comes the big climax of the picture. The Texas kid walks into town. Coming in, Mike. <laughs> I'm coming in, I'm coming in alone. <laughs> bam, bam. That's two bullets you shot, Mike. <laughs> bam, bam. That's four, Mike. <laughs> bam, bam. That's uh, two and four. That's six, Mike. <laughs> You're all out of bullets, so I'm gonna give you a fair chance. I'm coming in with my bare hands. <laughs> Here I come. Bam. Oh, Mike. Ah, I fooled you, didn't I, Texas? Didn't know I had two guns, huh? Ah. Well, you've been the thought of my sword long enough. And so I want you to say your prayers. So long, Tex. One, two, <laughs> You got me. Black Mike's through. Brownie! <laughs> I couldn't find the hold I couldn't find the soldiers, Tex, so I shot him myself. <laughs> Thank you.
The Admiral Broadway Review presents Conflict, the conflict between classical music and progressive jazz, the conflict between the classical and modern ballet, danced by Tanaquil Leclerc and James Starbuck as the exponents of classical ballet, and Beatrice Seckler and Herbert Ross as the modern dancers. Conflict, choreographed by James Starbuck.
and into your room. Your admiral dealer extends a bond invitation to his friends. Be back again next Friday when an admiral show time will rip up in no time a brand new review. So when goodbye and your goodbye is admiral over the top of the evening to you. When your Admiral Dealer, the man to see for dual temp refrigerators, electric ranges, radios, record players, and magic mirror television, brings you another star-studded Admiral Broadway review. Written by Mel Calkin, Lucille Callum, and Max Leap. Choreography by James Starlin. Settings by Frederick Fox. Costumes by Paul Dufont. Orchestra conducted by Charles Sanford. Orchestra arrangements by Don Walker. Vocal arrangements by Ray Carter. The Admiral Broadway Review was produced and directed by Max Liebman.